So uh, tonight I wanted to introduce myself. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, I haven't had the opportunity to meet all of you. Uh, my title is Leader of Experiential Learning and Community Engagement. And so some of you might have known Steve Shapiro, who is my predecessor. And he started a number of programs at Bexley High School, one being the Global Scholars Diploma Program. He really initiated a lot of this work around the importance of experiential learning and providing opportunities for students to be able to kind of knock down the, the walls of the school and, uh, and to engage in a variety of, um, of opportunities outside of it. Um, and he's also looked at ways to be able to bring elements of the community into the school so that students are, are able to, to have some of these really authentic experiences. Uh, so tonight I'm primarily going to talk to, to you all about the Global Scholars Diploma Program and then field any questions that you might have. Um, but I also wanted to share with you just kind of a brief um, kind of a brief picture of what experiential learning is. I know that there are probably varying degrees of comfort or uh, clarity that, that people have when they hear the term. There's a lot of terms in education that get used interchangeably um, and by and large mean very similar things. Um, but I wanted to define here uh, just with, with uh, so, some words and um, some images and some examples what goes into a really high quality example of experiential learning? And so the first component is that it needs to be active. So these are the types of experiences where students are building, creating, finding, discussing, moving, researching. They're not passive recipients of material, but instead they're, they're getting information and doing something with it. It also needs to be engaging. So it should be something that hooks student interest, it captures their attention, and it really promotes a response to curiosity. And so this is a really exciting part of our, our new strategic plan is this focus on curiosity and really allowing students the chance to lean into the things that they might already be curious about, but also piquing their curiosity and getting them interested in the world around them. And sometimes it takes stepping outside to be able to, to connect with and uh, be inspired by some of the things and the people um, that, that exist around them. It also should be relevant. And by this, I mean that the moment shouldn't be um, kind of novel or isolated. They should be moments that underscore or prepare or clarify elements that we identify as being significant. So whether that's a concept in a class, whether that's specific content that really kind of stands out above the rest as being something we want students to walk away remembering, whether it's skills or whether it's a, a type of thinking that, um, that we want to, to give students the opportunity to practice or to be exposed to. It also should be connected. So when we leave a field trip um, or we leave a, an experience that is a simulation or when we finish engaging in a proposal or implementing a project, we wanna make sure that students can contextualize why they had that experience. They're able to talk about it in terms of their overall journey and learning. And they're able to, uh, to really define a clear purpose for, um, for anyone who, who's kind of curious where, where that fits, but most importantly for themselves. It's also equitable. There are a number of times, and maybe, maybe some of you can relate to this, but there are times where you're sitting around uh, in a group, whether it's a class, whether it's an extracurricular activity, whether it's a social function, and there are a group of people who have an experience that they can refer back to to help clarify something that is being discussed. And that, that experience that they're recalling, that, that they're able to talk about and make a connection to, provides clarity for them as a participant in this new situation. But there are other people in the room who maybe didn't have that. And so therefore they're kind of left out of being able to connect whatever is happening uh, in front of them to something that, that really anchors them in, in understanding and being able to make that connection. By creating moments for students, by giving them opportunities to engage in an experience collectively, we are 
offering a common experience for students to kind of all be on the same page as they navigate through a unit or through the journey that they're going on to be able to, to grow as learners. We're able to go back to that experience knowing that all of the students can access it. It's also reflective and it, it, this is a really essential component. I know sometimes life is really fast and things kind of run over and we, we wanna make sure that we're not missing out on opportunities for students to really pause and think back, uh, consider why they did what they did, maybe where some road bumps were along the way, uh, to, to give them an opportunity to, to contextualize the things that maybe aren't clear at the time to, to think about next steps, to think about um, different ways of, of maybe approaching a challenge in the future. And so that reflective piece is really, really essential um, in, in defining a, a powerful experiential learning moment. So these three global themes I put next on this slide because I think tying in that entire graph together to the Global Scholars Program specifically lands us in a space where we can talk about the three major themes that the Global Scholars Diploma Program really emphasizes. And so the way that they have set up this program, it's a three-year program. And during the first two years, students have an opportunity to really dig in uh, and to have experiences where they're able to engage in discussions, they're able to ask questions, they have opportunities to, to participate in simulations, they might build things, create things, imagine things. There are a host of active moments for them to be able to wrestle with each of these three themes. And the goal of each one of those those field trip opportunities offsite is to give them a chance to walk away and have a really good sense of why each of these themes are significant and also ways that uh, they, they play a role in their, in their lives. So the first one being cultural competency. And so as they go through this, even though there's a focus on cultural competency in the first uh, the, the first session, the first field trip that they go on, that's something that's really emphasized throughout the entirety of the program itself. There's a careers element. So students will have an opportunity uh, to both work on skills that are needed to thrive in a competitive global workforce, but they're also going to have an opportunity to meet a variety of individuals who hold careers where some of these global skills are particularly relevant. And they'll be able to ask questions and really dig into some of the nuances of, of their position and how these skills play a key role in their success. There's also gonna be a focus on global issues. So uh, this program utilizes uh, the global issues identified by the UN as world challenges. And it gives students a chance to explore them and the way that they show up both in the world at large, but also in their local communities. And as they start to learn about the issues and think a little bit about some of the initiatives that have, have already been put forth to, to meet some of these challenges, they'll have a chance to weigh levels of success and what goes into uh, something maybe being successful in terms of addressing these issues. They'll also be able to see how the issues maybe tie into their own lives. And as they start to think about this, the goal is they'll walk away from the field trip with this in the back of their mind. They'll be able to engage in the world. And hopefully, as the, the group continues to meet together over the next two years, it'll be front and center as they're, as they're listening to the news or as they're hearing stories, meeting people, reading books, uh, engaging just in the world, even outside the program. Um, hopefully, they'll be able to make connections between what they're discussing in the program and the the way that that is nestled in, in the world at large. So as I mentioned, I mentioned year one and year two uh, as opportunities for the field trips and for students to be able to develop some skills. And so I, this graphic that was pulled together um, by the Columbus Council on World Affairs 
who facilitates the Global Scholars Diploma Program, really shows how everything builds. So it starts at the bottom with year one, and this is the year where awareness is, is really built. Students will have an opportunity to be exposed to a lot of the terms, the language, uh, the questions, the issues. They'll have a chance to start uh, thinking through different lenses in terms of uh, many of the challenges that, that they'll be um, that they'll be given to, to imagine um, or to, to actually hear firsthand about. They'll also start to kind of think a little bit about uh, the way that, that those experiences uh, that they're learning about apply to their life. That will build in year two and where they will have three more opportunities to, to kind of step away from school and to go on a field trip with their peers, as well as some of the other students from a variety of different schools who also participate in the program. And together, they'll have a chance to explore all of these together. And the hope is that there's a really solid foundation of exposure in year one, so they can start going a lot deeper when they enter these experiences in year two. And by the end of year two, the goal is for at least one, although as I've talked to some of the students who completed the program last year, in some cases, more than one issue might collide um, in terms of, of piquing someone's interest and uh, inspiring a project. And so students will, will, will find that, either one or two issues um, that, that really resonate with them. And they're gonna think about how they can actually create a local solution to that problem they'll plan it, and then they'll implement it. And then they get to share a little bit about their experience at a celebration that takes place in April, where all of the students throughout Central Ohio who are participating in the Global Scholars Program uh, will also have posters and will also share the work that they did. So this is a uh, just a couple of snapshots of a variety of different experiences. The one thing I want to point out is um, in talking to the Columbus Council on World Affairs about the way that the program is set up, what it what what to expect from the program. One of the things that stood out to me that they really emphasized was that due to COVID, the program itself was a little bit different. So some of the experiences that students who completed the program last year had were a little more distant than what was intended uh, initially, just because of the nature of our world and the regulations and the, the organization trying their best to figure out how to provide this opportunity for students even though we were in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, from what I understand, um, there is gonna be a, a greater opportunity for students to be really hands-on and involved uh, in many of these, uh, these workshop activities and simulations um, than ever before. I know that the year, um, the very first year that Bexley participated, they weren't able to go on field trips. So a lot of the work they completed were, uh, it was online work. And so they were kind of, interacting uh, in a digital format that I don't think lends itself to as much dy dynamic interaction as you would get from, from being in a room and feeling the energy and uh, being able to, to build on, on the people around you. So these are some of the, the pictures. Um, I hope you notice that, you know, here they're around a table and they're, they're creating something together. They're brainstorming, they're building, they're working as a team, developing collaboration skills, figuring out how to respond um, through their own lenses. Then over here, this is an image of the take action fair. And so that's the, the very end of the third year where students get to share what they did. So the field trips uh, for 23-24, this is a, a common question that I've gotten from some of the individuals who have come to, to ask questions. So I wanted to share that. It's only recently been solidified. So the year two field trips were solidified a little bit earlier. And that's because those cohorts were already set in stone from the previous year. But this year, our first trip is going to be on September 19th, and it will be at Franklin University. The goal of that is around cultures. So there will be a number of activities designed and facilitated that will help students develop an understanding of identity, both theirs and others, and then explore how aspects of identity can um, make up, how it makes up one's culture. 
They will get a chance to meet and ask questions of cultural ambassadors from a variety of countries. So this, again, will give them opportunities to see how various aspects of these individuals' identities uh, make up their culture. And these are all people who have volunteered to be able to engage and to lean into these conversations so that students can start to, to, to have a, a greater um, understanding uh, from the perspective of these individuals. On October 19th, we'll be going back to Franklin University, and this is the careers event. So the focus of each of these workshops will be skills necessary to succeed. So they're going to be looking at a variety of, of careers in a global market. I think for a while, we thought about careers that are local and careers that are global as being two separate things. And just the speed of technology has made um, most uh, careers global. Uh, you can't exist in the world uh, without being tied into um, the rest of it in some capacity. And so what I love about this is that even if students are interested in pursuing a career pathway that isn't necessarily global, every single one of the skills that they're working on is absolutely relevant to their lives. And to be able to have a chance to practice that, to learn about it, to target it, um, I think is, is really powerful. They will also have a chance to engage in simulations to strengthen skills and collaboration how they approach research, how to approach research, and then also how to navigate diverse markets. So when you're working with different groups of, of people who have different norms, how do you how do you work within that in a way that's um, both respectful and effective? And so that'll be something that they'll have an opportunity to do there. And then they're gonna have some speakers who will come and share a little bit about how these skills come into play in their day-to-day -day lives. And then the last field trip is on February 27th. This will be at Ohio Dominican University. And in this session, students will have uh, the chance to really dive into the issues. So once they've had a chance to look at identity and how it impacts culture, and then think a little bit about global careers and the skills that are necessary, now we're diving into some of the issues that uh, that the world is facing and thinking about them through a variety of different lenses um, and having the opportunity to explore all of the different elements that makes it an issue that rises to, to the level of being recognized by the UN. Uh, who, who is this impacting? So are there certain populations that it's impacted by? Um, or uh, is it something that impacts everyone? And then what are perspectives surrounding this issue in different communities? And then lastly, there's a variety of organizations who will share a little bit about what they're working on locally to tackle these issues. And then the other question that I've actually, that I've gotten a lot of um, emails about or people have stopped in to ask questions is just about the expectations of how much work, how much work is there? What do we have to do as part of the program? And what I will share is, um, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm brand new. I'm also brand new to Global Scholars. So I've immersed myself in this. I've met with the leaders from the Columbus Council of World Affairs uh, several times. Um, and I feel I've also tracked down a lot of students who have done the program, either completed it or in their second and third year to, to talk to them about what they enjoyed, um, any challenges, their perspectives. I think it's really important for me to learn from their experiences. But I also know that there have been um, some changes that the organization has made because we're in a space where we're able to travel. So uh, there is some work that students will need to complete as part of the program. Um, my understanding from the Columbus Council of World Affairs is that if students are able to come to the field trips during the first year, they will be completing what they need to complete through that. Uh, and then there will also be a couple of activities that we'll do, some meetings that we'll have just as a local group. And those will be designed around student interests. So if, if students are interested in looking at food and being able to celebrate um, together with food and, and to, to explore a new restaurant, to uh, how, try our hand at various recipes, to bring in speakers, uh, to watch to watch movies, uh, whatever the, the interest level is in some of those uh, aspects, 
we will design experiences that give them the chance to, to really dig into that. There's a particular issue that really strikes a chord or a particular career that piques interest. We can also find local speakers who can come in and, and talk to us, and we'll be able to, uh, to, to really deepen our knowledge about some of those different areas. So there will be a handful of meetings. They will not be frequent. Um, in the first year, we will strive to meet once a month, and then there will be the three uh, field trips. And there won't be, as long as students are able to, to come to the field trips, there will not be additional work on top of that. In year two, there are some worksheets that students are asked uh, to complete, and those worksheets are uploaded to a learning management system called Learn Worlds that's managed by the Columbus Council of World Affairs. And so they review the worksheets, and if the worksheets are not submitted um, and in a way where, where it meets all of the standards, then they will send those worksheets back with some feedback. And in that case, students will have a chance to, to go back in, to look at it, uh, to clarify maybe some areas that, that weren't quite clear. That's also a space where I'm able to sit down and go through it with students and help support them in any way possible to make sure that they're successful. Um, this, this program is set up to support student success. So, uh, and, and it is in my DNA to be able to do that as well. I think if there's ever something that interests a student and they want to lean in and learn more, um, then if there are barriers along the way, then it's it's my role as an educator to, to be able to help them navigate past those barriers. Barriers. So, and one of those might be uploading some of the, the, the assignments to, to learn worlds or to be able to respond to some of the things that need they need to be able to complete to meet their requirements. So that all being said, the one thing that I think really stood out to me is that every single student that I talked to from Bexley who shared their experience with me recommended the program, even if they said there were moments where it was difficult to balance everything. And there were a few who shared that they wish they could have gone on field trips rather than participate in some of the experiences online. In the end, they had very positive, glowing reviews about the program, and they were thrilled that uh, Bexley was going to continue the program, even though Mr. Shapiro, who, who started the program here, uh, retired, uh, they were really, really excited that we were going to carry it on. And so when I hear that enthusiasm and then I see a number like 95% and that number comes from the other member schools, so it's not just Bexley, but it's all of the schools who participate in the program throughout Central Ohio, 95% of them recommend it to their peers. And I think that's that's a really powerful number. Students only have so much time. They're incredibly busy as they navigate through this time of their life. And so the things that they pick for the way that they spend their free time, th those things need to be fulfilling to them. They need to be able to walk away and, and feel like some part of them is better for having invested the time. And so I think that that this speaks measures about the program, and I hope uh, for all of you listening to this, um, if you have a student who's on the fence, I hope that that this is something that that maybe they consider that from a student perspective, it is seen as a valuable experience. And then I also wanted to mention scholarship opportunities. And so, so Jessica Flowers is a leader at the, the um, Columbus Council of World Affairs, but there's two different scholarships available. So um, there's, of course, participating in programs like this, look good on college applications. You're gonna hear that type of thing all the time. Um, but I'd argue that that's not why someone should do it. I think, um, there's a million things you could do that look good on college applications, but I think being able to choose the things that fulfill you, that challenge you to grow, are really the things that are going to look the best because they're going to, to make you come alive when you're filling out those applications. Um, in a similar vein, there are a lot of different scholarships that I realize are available to students. However, um, these scholarship opportunities uh, are a really, really nice uh, attribute that kind of go with the program. 
program. So uh, the CCWA Take Action Scholarship, there are two winners that are selected that have exceeded expectations. So they have a scoring guide that, that is used that basically has two levels. Uh, actually, it has three levels. that has does not meet the requirements, which we're not going to worry about because we're going to get all of our students where they need to go. Um, but we have the MET program expectations level. And then they have an exceeded program expectations level that is really reserved for students who are interested in this scholarship. And so this should be somebody who has decided that this is their thing and that they really want to invest the time and energy to make this project something um, that is a little bit more than is expected. And one of the key differentiating things is that when they identify their issue and they create a solution and they implement the solution, they're implementing it in a way that is sustainable. So even though they graduate and they go on and maybe move out of state or are immersed in whatever happens um, in their life post, uh, post high school, whatever they did has a has the the long standing power to continue, and so um, that is so that is the first scholarship. And the one thing I want to mention is Bexley had their first group finish the program last year, and one of the winners that was selected for the Take Action Scholarship was someone from Bexley. So I think it's it's pretty empowering to know that somebody from your home school has actually gotten a scholarship. There's something about that that makes it feel um that makes it feel achievable. There's also an Otterbein honorary scholarship and this is a $19,000 a year scholarship. So that is a, a pretty significant number. Um, there are a, a variety of interviews out there from Otterbein professionals who have just raved about this program and what they think it says about candidates who apply to their school. They really believe in the content and the experience. And so here, this scholarship would be something that would replace an academic merit scholarship. And it's obviously only offered to students who enroll in Otterbein. Um, and so this is, this, is a pretty, this is a pretty significant scholarship. And so I know that was a lot of talking and I'm talking to a screen of a black screen with white names across it. So it's it's hard to see faces to see if I put everyone to sleep um, or if any of this resonates or if there are questions, um, which I'll open up in a second for. Um, but I wanted to end just with these three QR codes. There's also links in the blurb that went in the uh, the newsletter for the week that, that Mr. Cottle sent out. But these are spaces where students can apply. The slides that I showed you tonight are available uh, by clicking the QR code there. And then obviously the bottom one, you all got the Zoom link, so, so you don't need the bottom QR code. But um, these are also posted around the school. And our goal, which it, it says on the application, but our goal is to have applications due by Friday. Um, and that's just because our first field trip is, is a quick turnaround. And I know that's not ideal. I just started, the, the students just started. Um, and I'll certainly work with anyone who's worried about getting it in, but there aren't that many questions on there. It's really just an interest survey to make sure that this is a commitment that students are really, really excited about because uh, we can only take 25 students. And so we wanna make sure that the student slots that we fill are, um, are students who are, um, are, are really excited about the work. 